Hey, what's up? Doing a couple quick things. I want to get one on video because, uh, let me turn this radio down. Hold on. I'm uh, switching out the control in my newest build um, because I was doing some falling with it. I switched out the control rod and the trigger out of this saw because I didn't have one to a steel. I took the steel one out of this, the OEM trigger and control rod, put the Pharmatech one in this saw, and uh, you had to order them and they came in. So I'm going to switch those out so you can have high idle. Um, and without them, you don't get high idle. Um, I've tried to shim them so it's full choke and it won't stay in high idle, okay? This one has the steel trigger in it. And it stays in high idle. See that? So, I am going to uh, put the control rod and the trigger in this one, which fixes that. And this one the other day, I uh, had a cust well, customer, I had a friend come by, want to borrow a saw. And this one's, uh, this one was flooded. First time it's ever not started. Um, so I'm actually, I'm going to rip this apart and show you how to unflood it. If you're getting that violent, now this one doesn't have an elastic start on it because I just had to order two new ones today. Um, this one you can see the elastic start ripped out of this one and this one's repaired but I actually got the internals for this now too the, to um, fix this cord but so I'm going to show you how to unflood that one too if this video doesn't get long so here's the uh, I'll show you the uh, steel part so here's the control rod they call it a switch shaft that's the part number it's 112-182-0902. That's it right there. They're not super expensive. And here's the throttle trigger. Uh, it's 1122-180-1500. Just go down to your steel dealer and get them. Uh, I'm going to apologize for the kind of the view angle. I, I don't know this GoPro well enough to know how much it's going to show up here. So let's just hope it's good try to if I have anything critical to show you I will um, switch in there so to do this I'll let you know what you need for tools too I got that. so to do this you need to pull this out so you're gonna take this uh, flange off intake horn that's eight millimeter nut driver I believe Typically when I when I port and mod these saws, I take that this um, support gusset out and actually smooth and round all this. This is one that I had not done. So this is pretty much a bone stock saw with a, just a little bit of porting in it, mostly on the exhaust side. Uh, this needs to come off. And then what you need to do is we need to pull this part up. Now I'm going to see, you can see the kill right here. So this is the kill connection. And when you put that all the way up, it makes connection here to kill your saw. That's going to be punched out of this. Um, if, if it doesn't move, I'm going to try and push it out right now. If it won't move right now, I'll take it out after I get the, uh, the control rod out of there. this without cleaning up my teeth on my trailer 
So to push that out, sometimes they'll just push right out of this hole. Yep, this one is. So that's out. And it'll go right back in the new one. Uh, the next part of this is, and, and, uh, and uh, it's not going to matter, so you can take that out. Typically, whenever you're working on a saw like this, keep it choked so that you're kind of blocking any particulates from getting down in there. But in this case, that's all coming out. So, Next part is to take the little Phillips head screw um, up in here. you got to take out. This one's been out a few times. I can tell you, do not do this with an impact gun. It's in the plastic. The screw's really soft. You want to hold this cover down while you're doing this. So that everything doesn't fling apart on you. And if you're doing this for the first time, you're going to want to pay attention to how it comes apart. So hold on to that. Now the best thing that I can tell you to do right now, especially if you've never done this before, you want to take this off real kind of easily so nothing comes flinging out on you. You're going to disconnect the throttle from this. I would suggest that if you've never done this before, to take a picture of this with your phone. So that you get this spring right. Okay? Um, that's really the only, the only important part here is that you get the spring set up right. Uh, so that your uh, operator control lever still works. So if you have to take a picture of it, but what you're going to do now is you're going to Pick this operator control lever out. Let's get your trigger. Another good idea to have your part ready for you, just because a lot of you haven't done this before, and so you don't get lost. So you're going to take your trigger out, right? And you want to take this spring off and put it right on your trigger the way it was. Okay, now that part's done. That's going to go back in as soon as I get the control rod out. This is your old one. You can see it's a Farmatech one. It doesn't have steel on it versus that. Um, as far as differences go in them, don't even get me started. I have the least amount of idea and I couldn't, I could not care less. Now this control rod, there's a um, this thing right here, hopefully, I want to make sure you can see this, so you should be able to see it there. This thing right here fits down over the top of it, and it slides into a groove. You kind of want to just pick this thing up. Sometimes it takes a, um, a screwdriver to get it out, but let's just take this thing out. Put this thing right back there for now, all right? So I'm trying to help you not get yourself screwed up. new control rod and again it's not a bad idea just to go ahead and take a picture of it um, when you're doing this the new control rod goes back underneath the kill this little piece is going to come back out actually that, that thing go under that? I don't think it does No, there's no way that goes under that. It's got to go under this. And you get to watch me fumble with it. But... Back in like that. This piece goes back down on top. Okay? Don't even mess with it right now. Alright? You're going to make sure your kill goes back in. I have to use a pair of pliers for that. Now 
I can tell you too that sometimes if this won't just push right in, I'll show you something in a second here. If that won't just push right in, there's a groove on the top here and sometimes you have to split those apart to get it out or to get it back in. But right now it's making contact right where it was. This is all installed, it's all right. This is down over it. I'm gonna put our trigger back in. bad idea right now just to kind of hold tension on it with that like that your operator control or a presence lever safety lever is back over the top of that spring like that now it's all done this goes back under here goes down over the top of this if you're hitting on anything, you're not doing it right. Okay, now that it's all done, if you want to hold this thing and just check it. There's your high idle. That's turning it off. Again, there's your high idle. That's turning it off. That's your choke. And, it, you know, it's, this is all happening with uh, the carbs loose right now. That's all done. Without losing this thing and getting and having it come apart again, I'm going to flip it on its side. Hold this thing together. Kind of, again, ease this thing in with a Phillips head. Be really gentle with it. It's easy to strip this thing. Don't ask me how I know. And it doesn't have to be super, you know, racked down tight. Hold it down like that. So that part's done. Everything works. Uh, we'll put this part back together. That's really, guys, it's as hard as it is to do. It's not a big deal takes just that amount of time all I used there was a Phillips head an 8 millimeter nut driver and a pair of needle nose that was it if you haven't done this to your saw and you're running one of those even if it's a pre-made saw, do it. When you tighten these down, real finger tight, till, as soon as you feel it start to tighten up, do the other one. This is one of those uh, tights, tight, two tights broken kind of deals. Sorry, I'm thinking about this. <coughs> <Back> fingers. <coughs> You obviously don't want to strip it, so it's just real, just finger tight. And it's starting to tighten up. Go tight, go tight, a little bit, a little bit, a little more bit, a little more bit. One hand on a nut driver. All right, so that one's done. Now we got high idle. This saw still started fine without it. Just, it would take a few pulls after it popped. It wouldn't just go ahead and fire right up. It would take a few pulls. Still in my summer setting. I haven't taken it out of summer yet. All right, so we got 14 minutes on this video. And so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna un fuck this saw over here. I'm gonna make sure it's not flat. 
to show you how to unflood a saw. What, what happens when they get flooded, and there's a lot of fluid in the crankcase down the bottom, not flooded from a starting standpoint, flooded from a pulling it standpoint, it'll rip the pull cord out of your hands. It'll pre-ignite because there's so much pressure in the crankcase that it'll rip the pull cord out of your hands, and you won't be able to start it. It's not flooded. If you could pull it, you could start it. It would fire right up. This will pop right now if I choke it and pull on it. It will pop and fire off. But the other day, it kept kicking the, uh, and this is a steel decomp. It kept kicking the steel decomp and ripping the thing out of my hand. So there's some sort of fluid in the crankcase. I don't know exactly why. Um, it's never done that before. I'll tell you one thing, that's going to need to be cleaned out. So we're going to go through... Um, you know, I don't need that. And and when people ask about these things or what the foam thing is and the other, this is the um, <coughs> heavy duty air filter with a pre filter on it. And this is a spit guard. And if you see in here, you can see the fuel in here. That keeps the fuel from soaking this. this. Your foam element that comes in the stock ones, that's what that does. It's not a filter. It's a spit guard to keep the spit back from soaking this filter. So um, I don't need to take this apart. I can just take this out to do what I'm going to do. I do need to pull the plug. Yep. Oops. Actually, I do it with a scrunch because a lot of this can be done with a scrunch. I just want to pry this thing just a little bit without ripping the insides out of it. Now, I'm going to do this with an impact gun for speed. This is a T27 Irwin if you um, are buying T27 bits. I haven't broken this one yet, which is a good sign. I've broken a lot of other ones. What you want to do to unflood these is pull the plug. This isn't, a, or not, I'm using the wrong term. It's not a flooded. It's got fluid in the crankcase. It's making it harder to pull it over. What you want to do to get them from, stop them from doing that. And if you look at this plug, you can see the um, brown on it. It's, matter of fact, there's a good view. It's brown on this side and it's a little bit light on this side. This saw is pretty much running perfect. It's almost lean, which is what that will look like. But it's all brown on this side. So it's split half and half. Brown is perfect. So this saw is not running too rich. It's actually running a tad bit towards the lean side. What you want to do now to unflood your saw if you're having if your saw is flooded, you can't kick it over. Flip it upside down. And you want to pull on the pull cord like this. And all that does is it takes whatever fuel is down in the crankcase, allows it to go up through the transfers, and leak out through the top. And I really didn't get anything out of this, so... You know, it could have just been a bad finger day for me. Maybe my fingers were a little weak. These saws are no joke to start. Um, I have, I don't know, 12 saws. And these are the only ones, these 660s that I build are the only ones I need to use to become. That's the way that you unflood a saw because you don't know where the fluid is. There you go. When you start them back in, do not start them with an impact if you do take them apart with an impact. Snug.
hear a buzz in the background. My wife's sand in there. I'll show you the doors we're doing. I'd never impact these back in. You do, you just ask them to strip one. It takes two seconds to do it like this. I'm just gonna grab my air and blow this up. Actually, I'll just blow it off really quick because I'll see how it starts. Hold on one sec. the seats make sure you feel it ratchet in when you push on it like that if it doesn't ratchet in it's not on there good if you take these apart this way put this thing back in if some of you haven't already given up on it you gotta kind of pull a spark plug wire down to get this part of it above it and then just seat it down so you don't have to take everything apart to get it all Oh, in my winter setting here. Got back in summer setting since it's still warm. That's what those are. That summer setting on the top. That just keeps warm air from coming in from the top of the engine down inside. Winter settings in the bottom keeps cold air from coming up inside. Alright, so let's see if this thing kicks right off and uh, let's see where we're at. We're 22 minutes, so we're still good. Let me show you what we're working on. We're making some sliding barn doors to match doors in the house. Kate's, uh, Kate's sanding them. This is the back side because his window's going in them. This is the front side right here. Um, with the uh, muttons and, muttons and uh, mullions installed and routed to the profile that are on the existing doors in the house and we had to just fill a couple of holes so did a little epoxy fill here but that's what the door is going to look like I uh, got a cut piece of Lexan that's going to go in that groove right there um, it's all right, this, this one's already been cut this one's all ready to go but she's doing some sanding and we're just finishing them up for a customer but let's see if this thing will fire right off I'm going to put you I'm going to move you away a little bit so you can see from a distance. Looks like it's got plenty of fuel in it. So if you're getting that violent kickback, you know, I got one there, I was on choke and it popped the next time. If you're getting that violent kickback, just do what I did to get the crankcase empty uh, and then right back in business. And like, it, you know, when these saws are brand new, you have that problem a lot, especially if you use cable rings like I do. The cable rings seat and give them real, they're, they're not very forgiving until they really wear in. Once they wear in, they become a little bit I don't know, kinder. So that's just a good example of how you get one un unflooded and back running. So 
little saw school for some people if you are watching this still you know this is probably affecting you here's a little saw school for you full choke right everyone always says you pull till it pops that's true to a point if it doesn't pop like in the summertime when it's warm if you pull it like four or five times and it doesn't pop go right to run and then pull till it starts never go back to choke ever if it doesn't start and if you pull on it on high idle say five or six times and it doesn't start click it up to just run and then I don't care if you pull it a hundred times pull it till it starts never go back to choke or you're gonna flood it okay so yes in theory it's choked till it pops but I can tell you if the saw is warm it's not gonna pop like that and you're gonna flood it especially if you pull it ten times because you're giving it no air and full fuel so I hope that and then typically if it doesn't pop within say five or six pulls go to high idle pull it maybe three or four times you'll hear it kick and then it usually will go off sometimes you flood it a little or smoke a little and it might start a little quick but it'll start if you pull it high idle let's say ten times and it doesn't it doesn't fire then you go over to run and then it's pull till the cows come home I don't care if you have to pull it 20 times just pull and pull and pull and pull and pull and it will fire off unless there's something big wrong with the saw but don't go back to choke okay once you take it out of choke never go back there and if you're if you're what's this? if you're um, if it's hot out and the saw has been running and let's say it hasn't been running for 20 30 minutes it still should fire without choke always try it without choke first so just put it on run try it if it doesn't fire then go to choke it should pop on the first or second pull but that's only if the saw is warm I always try it when it's warm with try it on run first most of the time it'll fire first pull if your saw is put together and sealed up right so um, that's what we're working on is Kate and uh, she's got her new goggles on over her glasses she just got those to fit over her glasses and she's got her isopro um, ear things in so she's listening to music but uh, yeah so this saw right here is um, you saw how much compression this saw had this saw right here is my oldest one that's the first one I ever built that saw is almost five years old and it still is a banshee so it's still got tons of compression that saw I've kind of retired it from milling which is why it's got the little 25 on it and it's kind of become a firewood bucking saw now um, just be just because it was my oldest and it's treated me so good that saw is milled it lived its whole first four years just milling lumber and it's still got that much compression which you just saw me yanking on starting it on the ground like that standing on it so you know uh, that's it hope that helps out and um, hope you guys have a great day